bit and you can praise the Lord with your whole body. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. There you go, church. We're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Go sing that one more time. You came from heaven to earth. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. There you go, church. Sounds good this morning. If you have a hymn book around you, I want you to find song number 143. Can go give you a break today, Mom? So tragic. So tragic. But let me ask you something, church. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? It's good to have you all here. We have a wonderful service that's uh, happening today. We're baptizing today. I'm so excited. I'm glad to see those that have come that want to be baptized today. Um, so stay tuned for that, stay tuned. But this song is called Blessed Assurance. We're going to sing the first and last verses of this song. And you're welcome to shake somebody's hand if you haven't done that already. We can do that today. This is Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance Jesus is mine what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my day long sing verse three perfect submission all is at rest i in my savior i in my savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking up Filled with his goodness, 
filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long praising my savior all the day long Thank you for singing with us, church. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Now you can see how tall I really am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, we moved the pulpit for our baptism service today. Amen. So thankful. Praise God. Amen. Well, thank you, ladies. It's awesome, and even the little one here. Yes. Amen. Well, we got some birthdays this month, and God bless those I don't know. Have birthday and anniversaries of those. I got Robert Murphy, I think he's here. Birthdays, is it today? Today. And then we got uh, Roger Blanchard, Dr. Blanchard. His birthday's tomorrow, isn't it? Amen. You been talking? Okay, okay. <laughs> amen. Bonnie Johns, amen. Her birthday's today. Oscar May, he's got a birthday coming up. Amen. And Drew Clark, I know he's over here somewhere. Got a birthday. He says it always snows on his birthday. It's the 19th, right? I can remember that because it always snows on his birthday. So <laughs> we may or may not. We don't know. <laughs> but God bless those who have birthdays this month, anniversaries. God bless y'all all for being here today in God's house. Amen. Welcome visitors and those returning back. Praise God for you being here today. Well, at this time, I'm going to ask of our deacons to come forward for our morning tithes and offerings, please. While they're getting ready, we got uh, Bill Lewis coming on February 4th. Come and sing Amen for Sunday, February, I believe that is. Put that on your calendar. Ladies, we're meeting the Ladies Fellowship. All ladies are invited over to Schoolhouse on the 22nd of January. So, what date we picked. So, y'all put that down. Amen, gentlemen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we have to pray for you. Bless us with all this. We seek to be within your presence, Holy God, this morning. We hope and pray, Lord. Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, though none go turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus 
Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Hallelujah, most holy God, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you start blessing us and bless us in our sleep and bless us as we wake up. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for visiting us today. And Lord, we pray that you accept this offering. We dedicate it to your Son in his name. Holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jim. May be seated. I also ask you to keep in prayer Lenny Glazer. Um, had his surgery. Uh, they removed the tumor uh, near his eye. And he's in a lot of pain today, but he's home. So I ask you to keep him in your prayers. And we thank God he was able to get that tumor out. Amen. Amen. And keep John Catlin in your prayers. He's home and healing. And and up, she's here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Lord of praise. Thank God. We ask you to keep uh, Jeff and Mary Smith in your prayers and some of the McDowell family. They've got this old flu bug that's been going around. Amen. Stay home. <laughs> Stay home. Yes. <laughs> God bless them and keep them in your prayers. But uh, um, this time I have new site. I have new site. Put your hands together for new site this morning. Amen. Thank you. We kind of picked the song last minute this morning. We said, what do you feel like singing? And this song just felt right. Just felt right. You know, I'm going to say this. I, I, and I usually, Candy's always like, no, it's OK. I said, I feel a little embarrassed holding my baby on stage. But if you can do both, why not do both? Why not do both? So if y'all are OK with it, I'm all right, too. That's right. I don't care if you're not OK with it. I really don't. Like, I'm OK He's with happy. it. That's all that He's matters. happy. He's got his mom. But honestly, this, this church is very open to family, young families, old families, big families, small families. You know, your family is welcome here. And, you know, no matter what age any of your family members are in, you are welcome here. You are our family. And, you know, we sometimes got to adjust things around to make things work. But that's all right. God is good. We're going to make things Amen. work. Take this world from me I don't need it anymore I find myself complete For I am spoken for oh, And I pray by your love divine child of the risen Lord to hear you say this one's mine my heart is spoken for now I have a peace I've never known before I am finally free For I am spoken for Oh, and I praise you Oh, and I worship you Covered by your love divine, child of the risen Lord, to hear you say this one's mine, my heart is spoken for, and by the power of the cross. You were taking what was lost and made it fully yours. And I have been redeemed 
by you who spoke to me now i am spoken for covered by your love divine child of the risen lord to hear you say this one's my heart is spoken for, covered by your love divine, a child of the risen Lord, to hear you say this one's mine, oh my heart is spoken Take this world from me I don't need it anymore Spoken for, amen? Already spoken for by the Lord. Amen. This time I ask uh, Brother Mike Duff to come forward for our scripture reading at this time. I'm so glad to see everyone here this beautiful morning. Yes. Good morning, church. As so we come today for baptismals, what a special day it is. So welcome to all the people who's listening by radio, watching by TV. And I want to say this morning that this is a special church. Yes, it is. I've had a lot of people ask me lately about our church. What's going on at y'all's church? I hear a lot of stuff's going on down at y'all's church down there. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I tell them all that the world's moving right along, and they're doing whatever they want to do in this world. But we're doing whatever we want to do right here in this church. And we're praising God and giving God the glory and honor for everything this morning. I'll be reading today from Romans chapter 10. I'll be reading 5, 5 through 17. Reading from the book, you can follow along. But it's a special day. Being baptized does not mean that you are saved by no means. But that means you are willing to stand up before God this morning and show everyone that I am his. That's right. And that's a big part of a Christian religion this morning. Is making sure that his people are covered. But we want to be covered by the blood. That's where we are covered. So this morning, Romans 10, verse 5, salvation is for everyone. For Moses wrote that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience of all its commandments. By the way of getting right with God through faith says, you don't need to go to heaven to find Christ and bring him down to help you. And it says you don't need to go to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. Salvation that comes from trusting Christ, which is the message we preach, is already within easy reach. In fact, the scriptures say the message is close at hand. It is on your lips and it is in your heart. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that made that you are made right with God and it is by confessing with your mouth with your mouth that you are saved as the scripture tells us anyone who believes in him will not be disappointed Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect they all they all have the same Lord who generously gives his riches to all who ask for them for anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved 
But how can they call on Him to save Him unless they believe in Him? And how can they believe in Him if they have never heard about Him? And how can they hear about Him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is what the Scriptures mean when they say, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who, who has believed our message? Yet faith comes from listening to the message of good news. The good news about Christ. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. Amen. Just want to give a shout out we, um, to our... Food Bank staff and those who helped in that area, we received a letter and uh, we also thank our sponsors and this is a thank you letter. So we thank all those involved and this is from uh, TWF, that's what we'll call him, here in Lynchburg and he writes, Solid Rock, you're so kind, I'm so thankful. Thank you for feeding me another year. Amen. Praise God for him. And all these different families, all that you step out boldly for Christ, give your time and funds and different things to help with the food bank ministry. Tina, I know they appreciate each of you and help, and God bless this young man. Okay. And Children's Church is dismissed. All right, kids, you head upstairs. All right. If they don't want to go, I'll go. <laughs> They've got cookies up there. <laughs> I bet that would be a sight seeing me tromping up in the steps, wouldn't it? All right. We're going to be looking this morning in one of the most simplest passages in the Bible, but probably one of the most misunderstood, and we're going to be looking in John chapter 3 in just a moment. The reason that we are having a baptismal service this morning is that those who have been saved prior are following the Lord's example in believers' baptism, and what they're doing is they're showing to the world that they wish to follow Christ by doing this very act that we're going to uh, have back here in just a little bit, baptism. But what does what does saved really mean? You could walk up to the average person on the street and ask them what being saved means, and you would probably get as many different answers as you would people. A lot of people think that you're saved by being good. Well, no, you won't. Some people think you get saved by joining the church or in being involved in one of the sacraments of the church or by helping people. And, and, and those are not things that will get you saved. Not at all. That's not even what being saved means. Remember, you're not saved by works of any kind, but you're saved to do good works of every kind. So let's not put the cart before the horse. And I thought in John chapter 3 it probably would give one of the most simplest explanations because here is Christ himself talking to someone about salvation. It said there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, and he was a ruler of the Jews. He held a high office. And the same came to Jesus by night. Now, why do you think he came at night instead of during day? Because he was embarrassed. If they saw him going to see Jesus, he'd lose his position. I had the chief elder of a Jehovah's Witness assembly sneaked back to my house one day to talk to me where nobody would see him do that. And he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no man could do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus didn't even acknowledge that. He answered and said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That was something that nobody had ever heard before. It was an entirely new concept. This is the new covenant that Christ is going to bring, a fulfillment of all the things and all the laws of the Old Testament. And, and, and he's telling this to a ruler of the Jews, somebody that knows the Old Testament better than just about anybody alive at the time. 
Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He's talking about you've got to have a fleshly, earthly birth and then, then a heavenly one. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And then he told him, he said, don't be surprised that I said unto you, you must be born again. But he was. He was surprised. He, was, he marveled at it. And then he makes the statement. He says, the wind blows where it wants to. And you hear the sound and you cannot tell where it comes from, and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. In other words, on a on an earthly level, you cannot understand how somebody can actually be born again. And it doesn't make sense to the average person until it actually happens to them. And then they go, well, I, I get it now. It, it, it makes sense. Nicodemus answered and said, how can these things be? And Jesus said, are you a master of Israel and you don't know this? Truly, truly, I say unto you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. He said, I, I have told you earthly things, and you believe not. How are you going to believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And then he goes to say, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Whenever he refers to the Son of Man, he is talking of himself. And then he makes this statement because Moses did this while everybody was in the wilderness. They were disobeying God and doing some of the most awful things. And so God sent these fiery serpents to come in. And any time they were bitten, it killed them. And so a remedy uh, 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 to counter that, God told him to put one of those serpents up on a cross and hold it up. where every, And when anyone looks upon that, they will not die. And I'm sure they wondered, why in the world did God tell him to do something like that? Well, it was a prophecy of his son that was going to be put up on a cross for everyone to see. And everyone that looks toward that cross, believing what he did on that cross and accepting what he did on that cross, will not die as well. And Jesus himself said that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And I, I looked up the word believe because the, the Bible says in James that even the devil believes and trembles. Did you realize that the demons and the devil probably believes in God more than half the folks in the congregation here and is scared to death? And he, he, he probably believes in God more than the average person on the street. Because he knows that for a fact he's seen him. He's seen what he's done. He stood before him. So believing in that sense is not what really gets you saved. And I looked it up in the Hebrew. And the word in the Hebrew goes much deeper than the English word. It, it literally means when, when the translators put believeth, it really means to put your total and absolute trust in him. Excuse me. Believe him. Put your trust in him. Completely trust him to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Nobody in here can save themselves. You can obey all the laws that you think are on the books here and think you're going to make it to heaven. By the way, I've told the church this a hundred times. There are 611 of them at least. Most of them, we don't even know what they are. But you violated them. Anybody have bacon this morning? Or pork? Oh, look at y'all acting all self-righteous. You know you were up in the kitchen stuffing your face. Or up at McDonald's. Or if you had it this week, you're in violation. Anybody drive a car yesterday anywhere? Anybody cut lights on your house or build a fire yesterday? You're in violation. Anybody go more than a quarter of a mile yesterday? You're in violation. A lot of people don't even know. So don't think you can obey the laws in the Old Testament and make it in. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And so he says right here, the verse that people put up on banners at ball games and all that, for God so loved the world. That's you. 
He loves you no matter who you are, what you are, where you've been, what you've done. God loves you. Understand that. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth, there's that word again, whosoever puts their total trust in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's why you can look over the coffin of someone whose body had passed away and they knew the Lord and they were saved and you know that's not the end. They're alive somewhere in heaven right now. That's not going to be the end. You know that for a fact. Whosoever believeth puts their trust in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the bottom line to being saved is putting your trust, absolute trust, in God's Son and the work that he did. What, what did he do? Well, he went to the cross and became the sacrifice for your sins and my sins. And he took your place. And he took my place. Because even offering ourselves would not satisfy the debt for sin. It had to be a pure, spotless lamb. And Jesus was the lamb of God. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We're condemned enough anyway, aren't we? We all know what we've done. Just about everybody knows what they've done. We know that we have violated and transgressed all of God's laws and we've rebelled against him and we've lived in sin. We know that. So he didn't have to condemn us anymore. He came to save us. To save us from the condemnation that we already had. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Maybe you can relate to this. That light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Most crimes are committed at night. Well, why is that? Now, I was in law enforcement for 14 years. People would be out all night committing crimes, and we'd be there early in the morning booking them for it. Yeah. Why is that? Because nobody wants to see you. You don't want nobody to see you breaking into a building in broad daylight. You figure in the cover of darkness, nobody will see it. But somebody does see it, don't they? People don't want their deeds to be brought to light. None of the bad things that we've ever done do we want to be brought to light. And Jesus came and died for that, so it would not. People might remind you of your sins, but God will never do that once you accept him. But everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be known or manifest, for they are wrought in God. Well, there's some other things that go with that. Many people think that they can maintain a relationship with God after they're saved by going back to the old covenant and looking at this law and looking at that law and, and, and that there's somehow they can earn their way. Earn their keep. Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 saying, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. That's, you have to keep your faith in him. You have to put your faith in him. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we may be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. In other words, nobody can make it to heaven. No one can experience the new birth. No one can be born again by the works of the law because the works of the law condemns every single one of us. You were saved by grace. It was something you didn't deserve to start with. And you're preserved by grace. Anything, anybody think you can earn your way? If so, if anybody can earn their way to heaven, y'all just go on and float on up like a balloon to the ceiling. We'll get you out of here later. Go on, you can float. Probably you'll go right on through the roof. If you're that good, you know, sit still, Candy. What good work can you do? Which of the Levitical laws will save you? 
or keep you. Oh, people, it's the blood of Jesus that keeps you. That's what does it. Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God knew that if any part of your salvation could be earned by your works, there would be nothing but bragging in churches today. And I've actually seen bragging in churches. Made me cringe. They'd get up there and they'd talk about all their goodness and all their wonderful things that they've done and how good they've been all week. And they seem to forget that Isaiah said that all the righteousness that you can muster looks like filthy rags in the eyes of God. That's kind of scary, isn't it? It's a gift. Salvation is a gift that you did not deserve. The big problem in churches, on the street, anywhere else, is a lot of people have deceived themselves into believing that they were saved and they've never been saved. They've been in church all their life, may even hold a position in church, but they never really got it right with God to start with because they came forward and somebody would go, well, repeat after me, okay, you're saved, go on back to your seat, everything's cool now. And nothing happened, there was no change, there was no transformation, they were not born again, they were just lost in, in church. A lot of people are lost in church. There are a lot of people lost behind a pulpit. It's true. It, it, and there are a lot of people that get in church. You ever heard that? I'm going to get in church. They get all involved, and then they walk away, and you don't see them anymore. It was kind of like the, the three preachers that were talking one time, and they all had rats that got in their church. Couldn't get rid of them. One of them said, I called an exterminator in, and... As soon as he got rid of them, it looked like they came right back. Another one said, well, I set traps, and that didn't do any good. The church is still full of rats. And the other pastor said, oh, no, 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 y'all are rank amateurs. He said, I baptized every one of them, and they never came back. <laughs> I've seen it. Seen it all the time. People talk about what they're going to do for God and all the fields they're going to set on fire for God. And... Then they disappear. You know why? Because they were never really born again. They were never really saved. Somebody asked John about that in 1 John 2, and he said they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt had continued with us, but they went out that they might be made known that they were not all of us. Now you might not want to come to church here. That's fine. But you'll go somewhere if you love the Lord. Amen. Can I just really be rude and crude? If you don't have enough salvation to carry you to church, I doubt you've got enough to carry you to heaven. Now, you're going to love the Lord once you get saved. Things will change. You'll want to be with God's people. Oh, yeah, you will. Look around in here, man. Look at this diversity in here. Some of them are rough as a corn cob in here. And the rest of them are, but they hide it real good. You'll want to be with, I love these people in here. This is great. That's some of the uh, uh, most wonderful people in the world. Do they have problems? Duh. Everybody in here has got problems. They're fighting the devil all week. They got struggles that they're going through. But you want to be with them because you're going through them too and we need to stick together and pray for each other and fellowship together. That's how you get your strength. Amen. Folks, this is a serious deal that I'm talking about. This is not something that we play with and if we don't like it, we can walk away from it. This is a commitment forever when you get born again. Matthew chapter 7 warns, Jesus warns us, he says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, what is the will of God? People have spent their lives wondering what the will of God is. Peter 3, 9 says this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There you have it. 
Anybody know what God's will is? God's will is that we repent. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to repent of our sins. That is, and he does not want us to perish. God takes no pleasure in anybody being lost. So you want to know what God's will is? It's to repent, period. Now his individual will for your life will be revealed as time goes by. But he wants us to repent. So make no mistake. Not everybody sitting in church is saved. But they could be if they would accept it, if they would put their trust in him. Let's look back at Matthew 7. Jesus said, many will say to me, talking about the judgment, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. There will be people in the judgment that said, Lord, we used to preach for you. We used to do miracles. We used to cast out devils. We used to do all these wonderful works. And he said, I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. Not that I used to know you, and I don't know you anymore. I never knew you to start with. You never were born again to start with. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Let me, let me say something, friends and beloved. The worst thing you will ever hear in all of eternity is Jesus telling you to depart from him. Please don't ever let it go that far to where you will hear him in the judgment tell you depart from me, you that work iniquity or lawlessness. I would much rather make it in and hear him say well done and this is yours, come on in. Well done thou good and faithful servant and have struggled than to live the life of whatever I want and then hear him say, depart, I, ne I never knew you. Once you hear that, it's over, folks. There's no second chance. There's no way out of that. You're, it's over with. So I would say this before we have baptism, before we close up the service or do anything. Today, folks, make sure that you are saved. Make sure that you're safe. Make sure that you're in the faith. Make sure that you are born again. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I don't care what anybody on TV tells you. I don't, it doesn't make any difference. Jesus is the only way. That's it. It has to come through him. You have to totally put your trust in the Son of God. And once you do that, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. You're born again, and things will change. You will not be perfect until the day you leave this earth. But he will work on you every day. The Holy Spirit will be there to work on you every day. And he'll make a change in you. And you will never have to hear the words, depart from me. I never knew you. Let's all bow our heads for a moment. I, Nobody looking around but just me and the Lord. Just, just me and the Lord. Who would say this morning, Dave, I, I never really did that. Oh, I may have been in church or may not have been in church, but I never really made that, put my trust in Christ to be born again, to be changed. But I sure would like to before I leave here today. I'm not asking you to join nothing, buy nothing, do anything but just accept that free gift right there by putting your trust in him this morning not going to call your name out I don't know half the names in here this morning but I will pray with you I'll pray for you from right here who would just lift their hand and say that's me Dave pray for me before we leave today would you remember me in prayer I, I want this I want this in my life too would you lift your hand all over come on God bless you God bless you Three, who else? Come on, don't be embarrassed. This is important. Four, five, God bless your heart. Anybody else? I, I want this. Six. There's six adults that said, I want this. And praise God for that because you'll get it in just a minute. It's going to happen to you. Anybody else? Remember me before you pray. But well, here's what I want you to do right where you're sitting. I, I, I just want you to, to right now say, Lord, I put my total trust in Jesus Christ as my Savior. I accept him as my Lord. Change me, Lord. 
and put your Holy Spirit in me. If you prayed that prayer as a testimony, would you just slip your hand up around here? Just let me know you did that. God bless you. Thank you so much for your honesty. We're going to have some folks to stand down front here. If you want them to pray with you, and we'd like to share what you did with the church if you don't mind. Don't be ashamed. This is the greatest thing in the world. We want to rejoice with you. If you, if you made that decision or if you haven't but you want to, come down here and take these folks by the hand and just say, you know, I just accepted the Lord. Just would you pray with me? And we're going to, uh, we'll just present you and then let you sit back down and rejoice if you want, if, if you feel led to do that. Don't, like I said, don't be embarrassed. If you uh, have, have not joined the church and you're planning to do that, then you come and take one of these folks by the hand down here as well and tell them, you know, I want to uh, be a member of the church. Whatever your need, maybe you just need prayer. I'm going to ask if everyone would please stand. And if you got anything on your heart this morning, come on down here and take one of these folks by the hand and tell them what you, what, what's going on and they'll, they'll pray with you. Come on, don't be embarrassed at all. This is serious Big deal stuff right here, folks. I can't emphasize it enough. So if you would, come on. We love you. Come on down. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome We'd like to rejoice with you. If you made that decision, come on. the devil defeated. There's nothing I like better than that. So let's beat him this morning. Let's defeat him. Time for you to come if you need someone to pray with you. Come on. We'll be glad to do that. It don't hurt a bit. Then come on, if you, if you, the Lord's dealing with your heart, come on.
seated with Deacon Lee Wilson, please come on down. And those who are need to get ready to be baptized, if you would come on and uh, they will show you the dressing rooms and all where to get ready at. Uh, I'm not sure how many we got this morning. I think it's at, I think it's at least three, maybe more. And um, if you would come on down. Just wanted, yeah. They pretty much seemed to hit on about everything that I was going to say this morning, believe it or not. God, he must, <laughs> God must you, give him some good dreams last night, even the wind part. I sat in here last night listening to the wind blow. You could hear the shingles on the roof. and I know, man, the, the wind don't know where it come from, and it don't know where it's going. Do you? I do. I know where I come from. I'm a good place. I know where I'm going. Hopefully you can say the same thing. If you don't, I can tell you where you're going. And it ain't good. It ain't even as good as where I've been. It's something to really think about. It's a lot of people in this world don't have that second day to think about it. So y'all give us some deep thought. Oh, uh, it's never too late. You don't have to make an appointment to be saved. Be saved in your chair, your sofa, your own bed. Pulpit's great. Church is great. Church is a building. We're the church. Uh, I just want to say what these people doing this morning is great. I know a lot of people in heaven rejoicing over it. Family members, God. Uh, I had an eight-year-old girl. I won't call no names. Uh, she wanted to be baptized. But her mother, her father, and her pastor, uh, one of our locally big churches, didn't think she was old enough yet. She got her own Bible, she reads her own Bible, she quotes Bible verses, but she can have a cell phone. That's what this world's coming to, folks. That's what this world's coming to. I come over here yesterday to prepare for this. Fill the tub, clean the church. Grandkids, they were with their uh, fathers this weekend. Have separated mothers and fathers. And uh, six-year-old asked me, what, what you gonna do tomorrow, Papa? Is, is Reed gonna be with you? Nah. Nana gonna be with you? I said, nah, Papa, gonna be by himself tomorrow. I said, but you have fun. Her answer was, ah, uh, you know about a Papa. You won't be by yourself. Jesus is always with you. That's right. Amen. But she's got a mama who thinks a two-year-old sister, two, two years older than her, isn't ready to be baptized. I got a problem with that. I got a problem with the church they go to. I've been there several times. I was the only person out of about 2,500 people, including the pastor, that had a Bible. They don't need it with that big screen. But it's just like you know, talking to our pastor said, Go there one Sunday. I'll tell you where it's at. I won't do it on TV. I don't want to make the church look bad, but I'll tell you first. So go there. See if one of that 2,500 can lead you to the Lord when you leave there. How many of them are really saved, man? How, many, how much of it's just a show? One thing about this place, it's no show. There's no show. 
If you don't believe it, go from that end up here and look back. So it looks completely different. <laughs> completely different, man. I mean, uh, there's no show in here. Everything in this church is real. And what you're about to see is real. And I feel like whether it's 3, 6, 10, or 20, it's worth doing. Everyone has got a blessing coming from God that they will not believe. And I thank all of y'all for attending the service. But give it some serious thought. The wind knoweth not where it cometh, where it goeth. Do ye. Thank you. That's the one, too. Chick, chick. You got enough volume. Get away. Yeah. That might, might not taste it. Might be brave. Yep, he did it. I forgot to tell y'all about seven o'clock last night. It wasn't the wind. I heard the door shut. And it was Dave and Andy, and the first words that come out of Andy's mouth was, oh, baptism, we got any ice. <laughs> I thought I had this warm, but Andy snuck back in after I left about nine. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank She knows the Lord is her Savior. Put your hands together for Ginger this morning. Amen. Ginger, Ginger, and Ginger Bird, right? Yes. You, sure, absolutely. Have you accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Having done so in the Lord, as the Lord has commanded, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, risen and new to life. friend being with her today as well. Amen. All right. Amen. Now this dear sister, her name is Amanda Stratton. Put your hands together for her. Amen. She's a great help too here at Solid Rock. And Ginger is this young lady helps in our, in our youth ministry. She's a great, great uh, young lady and I appreciate her so much. Go ahead. God Amanda. bless you, Amanda. Mm -hmm. have, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. Having done as the Lord commanded, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen with newness of life. <laughs>
Gina Johnson, and she's a blessing to us here. She helps with the food bank ministry and all the different things. She knows the Lord is her Savior. Amen as well. We praise the Lord for her. Gentlemen. Gina, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? More than anything in the world. Having done as the Lord commanded, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the likeness of his death, risen with newness of life. it or do we have anyone else at this time? Okay. We'll do it. Okay. Great. How about that? <laughs> Amen. Can, Tabitha, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Having done as the Lord commanded, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, risen with newness of life. Amen. Boy, that's something else. All right. Well, we praise God for all we have seen today. And we're actually early. I can't believe it. It's 10 minutes after 12. We never get out of here until 1230. But what we want to do uh, is we want to present everybody that if, uh, if you were saved in the service, I, I want to brag on you a little bit and make the devil mad. Come on up here and stand with me if you made that decision today. Come on. Come on, bro. What, what's on your mind? Come on up. Y'all come on. Yeah. You go right ahead. Guys, I want to uh, just have an opportunity up. while they come up here. Come on, everybody that's been, been baptized here and saved here. Listen, um, this is a vision that Jesus planted this is a vision that was launched in Acts 2. We started praying 65, 66 weeks ago. We did. Every Friday night. And um, it's all I can do to keep from crying when I watch people come up and get baptized Amen. because, I mean, it's prayer that we've jointly been one mind and one accord, not just Dave and I, but everybody in that group. And I want to thank you all that, that come, even if it just comes two or three times a year. I appreciate you so much. And this is the fruit of those prayers. Amen. Thank God for it. Let's not back down. Amen. That's right. God bless you. Yeah. All right. Um, if there were anybody, last week was their 25th anniversary, and if anybody ha had planned to join but were not here and you want to, you can come on down now. Uh, if you want to be, uh, be part of that, if there's anybody here that did not, uh, did not join that wanted to, is if we got anybody at all. All right. Okay, so all we're presenting this morning are those who were saved. All right, well, if you look around, uh, anybody else want to come? You, you, you raise your hand, but maybe a little squeamish. Come on, come on down here anyway. It doesn't matter. We're gonna, you're going to get a hug or a handshake or whatever. Anybody else? I accepted the Lord during the service. Okay, all right. Well, anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and dismiss. I wanted to remind you of our Wednesday night Bible study is downstairs at 7 o'clock every Wednesday. And also downstairs is our community prayer meeting every Friday night at 6.30.
And let me tell you, that's where the job gets done down there. If you've got something on your heart that needs to be prayed about, you come on and we'll pray for you down there while you're there. And, you, and, and uh, it, it's just it's awesome. And so we have children's church on Wednesday night as well. And it's always something great for the kids. So come on and, and avail yourself of all the things that are happening during the week. Anybody else got anything on their heart before we go home? Anybody else? Hey, Dave. Yes. Russell and Melanie are sick. I know they'd have been here had they not. All right. Well, let's stand to be dismissed. And I want y'all to come down and greet these folks that came forward and give them a handshake and a hug and welcome to the family of God and commit to pray for them in the days to come, okay? And, and let me admonish all of those that came forward. Stay in God's house. Get in a good Bible, believe in church, and don't ever back down for one minute, and you'll have the victory. And having said that, I'm going to ask Pastor Glenn if he would be so glad as to dismiss us. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we praise you this day. We praise you as we see with our eyes, oh God, that you work, oh God, and we know that you do. And we step out in faith on many things, oh God. We ask you today, Lord, to bless these that have just joined, oh God, give them strength to press in and, and really step close to you to listen to what you have to say and to seek out you in the Scripture. We pray, Lord, that you would bless those and, and may your light shine on everyone here as they go out, Lord. Keep them safe this week and bring us all back together, Lord, at the point in time. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. God bless.